down. Okay. Hey, welcome to another episode of the Black Guy Who Tells Podcast. I'm your host, Rod, joined as always by my co-host, Karen. And we are live, ready to do another Walking Dead recap. Okay, we the last survivors. Uh, we're a little behind, but hey, we're getting caught up. One more episode to go. Yes. Um, the official weapon of the show is the taser, the folding chair, and the unofficial sport is a <laughs> bullet ball extreme. <laughs> and y'all know what we came here to do. We uh, have to go to a Hornets game later on, so we mm-hmm. might as well just hop right on in this shit. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right it's the walking dead uh season 11 episode uh 23 it's called family um karen what'd you think about this episode in general this episode was really good i enjoyed this episode a lot uh, one thing I do really like since Angela a- Angela DeKang, uh has taken over is she gets uh, uh, all the action. You know, mm-hmm. you know, she's like, we're not fucking around. She eliminated a lot of filler that, you know, that I feel like some of the past seasons kind of had had once, once it got a little further on. Mm-hmm. And I like the fact that it was action packed. It was, you know, point to point to point to point. You know, it wasn't no drawn out stuff because you know in the past we would have seen more walking montages more of them talking to each other you know character development and things like that but you know since we're nearing the end it's like why do all that if you've been around this long you know the characters like you know this stuff you know they kind of just go to the next point go to the next point go to ne- and i appreciate that yeah, there's actually several points where they have like dialogue, but yeah, it, you know, it's just not drawn out. And I agree mm-hmm. with you. Uh, I enjoyed this episode as well. It's weird saying like the way we're doing this because it's such a cliffhanger. I wanted to immediately press play on the finale. Me too. But uh, you know what we've done with this and the audience is like, okay, we wait another week, we'll be fine. Right. But um, you know, shout out to us or whatever for the discipline because. This one, the way it ended, I liked it so much, but I was ready to go like, oh, how does it finish, you know? So <laughs> yeah. I broke this episode down into three parts. Uh, Alexandria, the Commonwealth, and fake-ass zombies, okay? <laughs> Those are the three parts. Uh, I'll probably do Alexandria first, then fake-ass zombies, and then Commonwealth. Um, but uh, yeah, I, let's let's go ahead and get right into it. Um in Alexandria, remember, we ended with them killing the Rosita killing the warden by letting a zombie eat his face. Mm-hmm. And then she was um, like, Where is my baby? Right, because she's looking for Coco. Um, we start with another montage. It, this time is generally about everybody, it's not a specific yeah. person, it's mm-hmm. like the whole crew. Mm-hmm. And we get a montage of everyone using their weapons throughout the course of the Walking Dead. Uh TV series Mm -hmm. and then as they're doing this we see people taking weapons out of like a crate and each weapon kind of corresponds to the person so you see like Daryl getting his knife and stuff like that and lastly we the last two weapons are Rick's gun Michonne's sword which are Judas weapons now Mm -hmm. and we see her pick them up and put them on and she in her montage she's talking about how it's about family and legacy. I think ultimately that's why the title of the show is family. The one before it was faith. Um, but I think it's kind of interesting because this might be the most we've heard Judith talk about her family. Yes. And it seems like future Judith or something. Cause it's like, I don't know if it's this girl's voice, but this actress's voice, but it's like, she refers to Carl wanting peace. Michonne wanting to put her sword down. Rick, wanting searching for mercy the fact that she never really knew her original mom um which is which is, you know so like we're getting these moments and glimpses into how she sees people and 
obviously she's getting older she hasn't seen carl died rick and michonne been missing forever mm-hmm. and now it's like you're wondering like is her memory of these people gonna fade so it's become a very personal family narrative uh she also picked up the old charter that michonne had drafted between the colonies when alexandria hilltop and uh i think oceanside maybe were trying to like come together as a like unit after years of like not fucking with each other and um that we know that was michonne's dream for a while um and so we see like we see judith pack that that charter up and put it in like her book bag or whatever mm-hmm. to go with that, her. That was a flashback because that's when they had first got to the kingdom and they had got like kingdom Alexandria and Oceanside. That was like the treaty, the big time treaty that they had all did together. Yeah, that's what I just said. Except I, I think I messed up. It wasn't. I think you're right. It was kingdom, not Oceanside at the time. I think Oceanside wasn't in it at the time. But either way. It just reminds you of the hope that Michonne had that one day we'll be a society. And the Commonwealth almost has that. You know, it has the illusion of that. Yeah. Uh, She then puts Rick's hat on RJ, who comes into the room. So we know she's the only one wearing that hat, but she gives it to her little brother. And she says, um, to end the montage, we didn't know when we started this that this would be the day that everything changed forever. So, <clears throat> you know, I'm about to happen. Big, 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 big shoes to fill. And then the opening, you know, credits. Uh, Rosita takes some ammo off of the dead guard zombie. Rosita on a mission. She was like, I don't have time for bullshit. She was yelling at extras. Get your ass on the bus. Let's go. Yeah, she wanted to get her baby back. And she like we see the warden's corpse laying there. It's all about getting the cocoa. Like, ain't no time for happy reunion or whatever. Gabe is talking to Tyler, who apparently Tyler was the guard that Princess like had uh, overpowered and put in that the the cell with her. I didn't realize this. I I, I was mm. googling who is this character because. Mm-hmm. They're making him so important these last two episodes. And I was like, I don't remember this motherfucker being this important. So I guess in addition to like, I guess, kidnapping Max, he's also the person that was the guard. So anyway, um, he ends up, um, uh, he's with them now. And Gabe is asking him, like, where do they take the kids? And he said, they take them to like the children's, like this place for children without parents, basically. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't actually know where it is. He just knows that's what happens to him. Right. So Gabe is kind of the calm one. He's like, we're going to get our kid back. And I I appreciate this dynamic between Gabe and Rosita because both of y'all can't be panicking and be on 10 and be about Mm -hmm. revenge. Like one of y'all has to be like, what's the logistics? Let's get the answers. And Rosita's the one that's like, I'm going to fucking kill everybody. (laughs) Yes. Dead on sight. Princess asked Magna is any, if, if anyone can drive the train, like how do we even know we can drive this train in the, in the right, kind of world. like I, I'm not a conductor, are you? And the one conductor they had killed itself. Um, and she says, Magna says, Oh, we have a person like a prisoner who thinks they, they can drive it. And I'm like, that dude that killed himself rather than conduct the train killed himself for no reason then. Because yes, they just found somebody else that could drive the train. So what the fuck? And then they killed the warden, so your kids would have been safe. Right. So you fucked up real bad. You died for I hope nobody Nothing. tells them kids how their daddy died for no fucking reason. Right. Uh, well, they, they his kids. They probably know he's a dumbass. Um, ah! Negan talks to Maggie on the side, basically saying, look, we need to kill Pamela Milton. I don't know about the rest of these motherfuckers. They got their own reasons for going back, but we know as long as she's alive, we need to get this no bitch. Peace. And she says, we are not a we. Basically, like, you and that mouse in your pocket because I'm not doing no plans with you. I still don't fuck with you. Which is interesting because I feel like this is a circular moment with these two. And it makes sense. He killed Glenn. Maybe she'll never, ever, ever be able to. But I feel like they have worked together a lot of times in the last two seasons at this point. And that was Negan's point. To not want to kill Pamela with this nigga seems ridiculous. Right, like, we should be unified on this. Like, I know, and his thing was like, yeah, we ain't the best of friends, but damn, like, uh, we both want to kind of peacefully be separated and she ain't gonna let that happen. Yeah, she's just acting stupid right now. 
Like this this episode had a few characters I think that regressed a little bit, maybe because they want to set them up for spinoff shows or future storylines, or they just needed something to move the plot along. But I thought a few characters kind of had some nonsensical moments. And her, we're not a we thing felt so ridiculous after all the shit they've done now. It's like now, like we not be might not be a we, but we still have the same goal of killing Pamela. So why not? Um, all right. She hugs Herschel, tells him she loves him. Then Annie tells Negan to be careful and he promises to come back. You know, all the goodbyes to your loved ones. And then uh, Zeke tells Nabila to take care, take uh, and her kids to take care. Uh, Judith tells Daryl and Carol that she wants to come with them as they're telling like RJ to stay here. Yeah. And Daryl's plan was for Judith to stay there in Alexandria with the rest of the kids. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's Judith. Right, and it's also one of those things where I I understand his perspective because in his mind it was like, no, 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 no. Like out of all these kids, like if something pop off, you got to protect the kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, like out of all the kids, you are literally the strongest, and you know it's like another soldier here versus you coming out here. With but us. it's also he wants he sees her as a kid. He sees her as his kid. True, and he wants to protect her. But she lost the daddy. Huh? Yes. I said, I said foster daddy. And so she basically makes the case for herself and once again refers to her family legacy. She talks about Carl. She talks about uh, her dad. And it's this like, you know, I want to make what my brother believed in real. You know, my uh, I want to make this future that all three, Michonne, Carl, and, and Rick believed in. I want to make that happen. And Carol approves of this. And Daryl reluctantly says, you can go, but you just got to stay with me at all times. Right. Because this thing was like, yeah, what we going to do, like, like you say, it's that protective parent, which I completely understand. He was like, I don't want you to get hurt on my dime. Like, I'd rather you stay here away from the trouble. And if trouble comes here, that's different versus we are actually going to the trouble. Not the same. Now they've gotten on the train. This is where I think the Angela Kang stuff stands out. They they said they were gonna get on the train. They get on the train. Yes, you we don't, just cut today on the train. Yes, you don't see them packing. You don't see no lot of gagging. They we we on the road again. Um, on the train, uh, we see a cool zombie death that gets ran over by the train and explodes. Basically, mm-hmm. um, too slow crossing the track. Apparently, uh, Rosita lays out a plan to Gabe on how they're gonna infiltrate the Commonwealth, get Mercer on their side. Um, come through the lower ward, which is where all the poor stay. They brought that up a lot this episode to kind of drive the point home of the uh, classism and Mm -hmm. and, that that the Milton's created. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they basically got a ghetto. Mm -hmm. And so they gonna, basically, they gonna come up through the hood um, and it'll, and and Gabe says why there? And she says, because it's gonna be less security patrols because the money is in the uh, the other part, the estates, and so that's where they'll be patrolling to make sure, you know, we're not they don't you know we yeah. they don't they get the drop on us or whatever. And my thing is, you know, that's our old job, so of course you know the layout. She probably had to do that job before. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, she worked security with mm-hmm. Mercer. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gabe says, and keep in mind, their plan still is to get Mercer on their side. So mm-hmm. everyone still sees Mercer as a good guy, yeah. but they don't know if he's going to be on their side. They just assume, right? He will. Uh, Gabe says they're going to get their kids back and he's all smiling and stuff. And she's like, is this your faith talking? He was like, my faith in you. And they have like, she says, I'm glad you're here. And, and so it's like a little tender moment. Mm -hmm. Um, then we get a, a princess and Tyler, uh, getting the radio work. And he wants to talk about how ironic it is that she and him are working together right now. And she basically like, I hear what you're saying, but we ain't got time for all that shit. (laughs) <laughs> um, I don't care nothing about that. Get this antenna in the air. Yeah, like get get on the radio, get the radio up so I can contact the person that's gonna help us get in. Um, then Connie, Kelly, and Magna actually have a heart to heart with Tyler, where they tell him they're glad he's here, and they they all get on the same page. He regrets hurting people, and he because like in addition to being a guard that put princes in a cage he also was the person that kidnapped max and so he's like i regret hurting people to try to get pamela to listen to me i just want her to listen and connie says you can fix those mistakes and soon the people will be listening to you 
uh, because, you know, the people are riled up and they're ready to listen now. Back in the Commonwealth, since, you know, all the unrest and upheavals happened. Mm -hmm. uh, Zeke and Negan have a heart to heart. Zeke is like, why you save me? I mean, no, Negan's like, why did you save me? Right. And Zeke says he did it because martyrdom is too easy. Like Negan would have went out a hero and he's like, you need to live your life and make every day, you know, like do something for people and shit. Or uh, that's the only thing that's going to keep my anger at bay. And Zne Zeke does his yet yeah, I smile thing of, you know, like, I'm not even supposed to be here. And yet I smile. <laughs> I got the cancer. Yet I smile. Wow. I lost, I, I lost my vanilla baby, and yet, yet I, I smiled. smiled. Yeah, he's, ah! you know, he showed the cancer and all this stuff, and uh, he's like, you know, I try every day, and I smile through all of it. And he asked Negan, why did you tell the warden your own name and not mine last week? Like, right. you know. Which is a valid question. You know, I had pissed you off and everything, and Negan says he did it so his wife and kid could have a better story about him than the one Zeke's been telling. He said, you know, um, essentially, I know y'all are better than me. If you think I don't know that, then you haven't been paying attention. And at least if I would have died this way, just saving other people with no other ulterior motive, nothing to get out of it, at least like th that, that story might have been big enough to at least like take away the the legacy that I built for myself with all the horrible decisions I made. Right. Uh, and as he says this, Maggie overhears it, which is interesting because we know Maggie just told him there is no we and all this shit. Mm -hmm. um, so I think they're trying to lay the groundwork for like him and Maggie's complicated relationship and redemption and stuff. And let me just say about Negan real quick. I love I love the fact that they wrote this and the fact that they're executing this. It was kind of similar in the comic. This idea of redemption, and especially in a society that has lost almost all forms of justice other than murder. Right. Like, if you want justice in the Z-Pac, you got to kill somebody. And almost every lesson that's been learned from not killing a person, from being merciful, has normally ended up with ruin. Like, Oh, you let that person go. They came back and tried to kill everybody. Right. You know, that's why they kidnapped somebody. Negan might be the first real example of, as Rick said, my mercy prevail over my wrath, where the mercy that Rick had has actually benefited the group. Like he was in jail. Uh, he escapes. He kills Alpha. So he's like a huge reason that the walk, the whisperers uh, are out of commission. Yes. Uh, he uh, saved the kids in like the snow. I can't remember which kids mm -hmm. it was. It might have been Judah, but like he's had several moments of like sacrificing himself at the at the uh, slavery camp. He's had these moments of I don't know if you want to call them redemption, but of. Uh, showing his changed ways rehabilitation or something to give you this idea of like man not killing him actually helped everybody yeah and also it's one of those things with this uh back to ezekiel it takes time you know he was like you have to live long enough to actually live your rap like i hear what you're saying but i need to actually see actions and you know he's been slowly showing his actions that he's changed and he meant that well, the thing for me is is the the thing for me is this show. I know it's got a bad rap or whatever, but I don't care. This show does such a great job of illustrating humanity to me. This is the closest shit on TV to just how life works. And if you think it, you know, shit sucks and people make bad decisions, that's life. You know, Republicans couldn't get a speaker of house for three weeks because. Motherfuckers are selfish and short-sighted and petty and stupid, and they do the wrong thing and they complicate things that are that 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 are not expedient. You know, they can't get over themselves. They can't no as long as no one can get over the thing that's been done to them, then the next they do the thing to the next person, right. and that person can't get over it, and the cycle never ends. And I know people kind of like left the show. I get it, but that whole mercy prevail over my wrath thing was such a like timely message that is just not going to resonate in real life with people but it's the only way to really 
move on from shit is to at some point some person has to be the bigger person so that we can stop the cycle and um negan is proof positive of stopping the cycle by not killing him he still was punished but stopping the cycle by not killing him has actually helped a lot more people than killing him would have helped agreed uh judith uh talks to carol um while this is happening and she talks to carol and daryl about not having heard from her mom michonne her mom in this case in a long time they reassure her like michonne's fine she'll survive right she's an adult she's not gonna give up um and they're like she will be proud of you uh carl she was like what about carl and 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 daryl's like carl would be proud of you too and carol says you know you two are actually a lot alike they are they really are um judith notes that carl died saving people he did he went message out. yeah he went out there to save people even though his daddy was like don't do that pay attention he died saving people okay it's gonna come back up pop quiz uh daryl says <laughs> when this is over he's gonna tell judith all the stories about all the people that love you yeah that's that old man story you know when we sit down i i tell you about the shit that happened before you born and the thing is, like, it means a lot because she she's young. She didn't have those people in her life that long. And as she gets older every day, she's probably forgetting a little bit. And so having people around you that can remind you of that love that the people had in their life for you uh, until they come back around and you get new memories or just the ones that are gone – uh, it means a lot. And that's also Daryl opening up. Because, you know, Daryl don't even really fucking talk. I can't even imagine mm, what the fuck that grunts. conversation would sound like. <laughs> right? How, yeah, how that conversation would go. Yeah. When he's like, I'm going to tell you about Michonne. Uh, she was cool. She was good. <laughs> she gr- good woman. You know, she really liked you. And then I'm like, okay, well, tell us some more. You yeah, know, y- Your dad was a good man. We fought. Right. <laughs> uh, all right. But I love, I love my dog. Let's move on to the <laughs> next segment, fake ass zombies. But let me play some music so I know where to put commercials. Okay. zombies so last time we left the on the road crew they were pretending to be zombies but they got caught up in a herd that ended up getting caught up in uh the commonwealth soldiers amassing a bunch of zombies for some unknown reason um and so it's aaron jerry lydia elijah luke and jules uh who's luke's girlfriend Mm -hmm. um they try to make a break from the herd and they're talking like whispers. I think I get it, but I kind of think the show should have had them do the whole mask thing. Because mm. it's, it, it's not it's a small thing. I'm not trying to act like it's ruining anything, but it's a small thing. But it bothers me that their faces are not looking like zombies and these fucking soldiers are looking at the herd. Ah! I, and then I don't realize there's a person in the middle of it. And it's so many of them. Yes. Like it's like maybe they would just think they were fresh zombies, but there are people they might even be looking out for or something. I don't know. It just feels weird. I'm not. There's nothing, you know. <laughs> the soldier, the soldiers like a uh, video games. You know how it looks and just be like scans. Just be like, all right. <laughs> yeah, I guess Reboot. so. I guess so. These are like Metal Gear Solid soldiers or something. Yep. But um, this is like oh, a cardboard boxes in the hall. No need to check that out. No need. Um. But yeah, so they try to make a break from the herd. And I did think it was really smart and cool how they were talking like whispers. Mm-hmm. But they were like, we can move now. Trees to the left. And everybody was doing that. Yeah, and 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 I like the fact that because I was like, yeah, if you use your regular no less voice, one of them zombies yeah. going to be like, uh, bitch, you ain't. You ain't yeah, no that's zombie. why the whispers did it. Yeah. You know, that's why the whispers did it. And now with these variants, who fucking knows? Right. Um, but so they try to make a break. They can't. 
because they, as they get close to the edge of the herd, another motorcycle trooper rides over with another herd that he's fucking like merging with them. Um, and so they get stuck in the, in the herd. The camera pans out. We see the herds are merging. It's getting huge. And they're heading straight towards the Commonwealth. Yes, as they pan out, because uh, I because I was like, I they I thought it, I was I, my guess was either here or Alexandria. Like they're going to one of the two places. Yeah, and Commonwealth makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, it was there's some theories we've had, and it's mm-hmm. starting to add up that it's looking like we're right. Right, and uh, of course later we get confirmation in the episode, but we have been speculating that Pamela uses these the threat of these herds to. Uh, lock down the commonwealth whenever there's some civil unrest and it will it conveniently happened when everybody found out like thought her son was making people go missing yes, was protesting and the then street. all of a sudden they needed a curfew everybody had to get home by lockdown yeah, by he, night. Was, he was like Shh, hear that i was like yeah they brought him close just close enough so that they could hear him and the thing is because she silos people and she has so much information that she's not allowing people to share in it's totally feasible. There's huge swaths of people that are in power but do not know Pamela's plan. So yes. to them, they're like, a swarm is coming and we just need to do something about it. Like Mercer is not thinking Pamela made a swarm. Right. That, so she got her own loyalty, her own people, even within that soldier group of people that protect the Commonwealth that Mercer's supposed to be in charge of. She got connections or power somehow over some of them that he doesn't even have. Uh, so then um, the they see an abandoned RV where where and they realize we can make a break out of the herd by walking and hiding into this RV. The 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 Commonwealth soldiers are far enough ahead of us; they won't see it. Except only three of them make it in: Jerry, Aaron, and Lydia. Jules and Luke just literally can't because the zombie horde is the it's like trying to swim up river. It's pushing them in a direction, in the opposite direction. And if you go too far against it, they realize, oh, it's a person. I'm gonna eat them. Yes. And so you can't talk. And so we just kind of see. I think it was Jules didn't make it in, and we just see Luke be like, "I'm oh. with her." You're like, she ain't make it. I ain't make it either. Right. It's, it's, it's like she went downstream. He was like, "Well, I guess I'm going down river too." And that's the difference <laughs> between an old couple and a new couple. Yes, it is. Old couples, like, if one of us don't make it, we both ain't making it. Right. Okay, we've been together for a while. We know what it is. <laughs> yes, sir. But the new couple, Elijah and Lydia, they get separated. That, that, Lydia that, that, that makes it love. in. Yeah, Lydia makes it in. Elijah does not. She reaches for Elijah to try to pull him in, completely giving away the game. I'm a, I'm a human. And a, a zombie goes, oh, look, human arm, takes a bite. Yeah, Yes, it does. Lydia gets bit on the arm. Elijah still gets swept away. Anyway, right? And it was one of the things, right? It's one of the things where the love is just so intense, but you're like, hey, 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 hey. Like, you do know, like, he'll be safe. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, nobody's attacking him. Y'all can always get back up. And she was like, no. Yeah, teenage love. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't hurt me again. Um, But the thing for me is, um, one Elijah's been out there in the Z Pac all these years. He's made it, he's been able to live, he's been fine. Lydia, you're a fucking former whisperer, you know better. Um, and so she freaks the fuck out, gets bit. Uh, the zombie start banging on the door, they close his RV right, door, she they screaming. pull Lydia inside. Um, while she's inside, she's freaking about about how I can't lose Elijah. And then they're like, You're bleeding. The fuck is this? Um, Aaron has to say to her, um, Elijah's gonna lose you because you're gonna die from the zombie bite if we don't cut your arm off. And so she was acting so stupid. This is yes. another what I feel like is a regression for the character. Now, I think you can kind of explain it away about she was triggered because of her abandonment issues and losing, you know, Henry, losing right. her mom and all these people. But it's such a rookie move. I it, I it was so I didn't like it. I didn't like that she did was acting this stupid because even after she got bit, it was dumb how she got bit. But even after she got bit, you got to b- buckle down like, OK, cool. I don't want to die cut my arm off. 
This is what the fuck I get. Yeah, think Let's... about think about the bigger picture. Instead, yeah. she's like, "No, we gotta get him." Like, so so you die, zombie. Like, what what's the point here? What is the point? Um, and and why do you suddenly act like Elijah can't survive? He's gonna be fine, you yes. know. And then since they didn't have like any foreshadowing or some moment where he was talking about some type of fear of being alone, so it just didn't make sense to me. But anyway. Jerry cuts off her arm, you know, Aaron tries to tell her, like, give her a pep talk about everyone. So many people love you. And I cut off my arm and I'm OK. You know, it's going to be all right. Right. They cut her arm off. She wakes up in pain. Soon as she wakes up, she, uh, you know, from passing out, she immediately is back on the we got to get Elijah. We don't leave people behind. She's crying and shit. Jerry's like, fuck it. I'll go get Elijah. Make sure he's OK. Hey, y'all make sure that Lydia gets to a doctor because she still wanted to come with Jerry. It was like, the fuck you think you're going to do? Bleed out? She was literally the worst, right, this mm-hmm. time. And and I know she's probably like a teenage character, but I just, I don't know. It just felt weird that she made it this far and then she just completely broke down in this episode. Right. Uh, but yeah, he leaves, Jerry leaves. The zombies conveniently don't try to get into the RV this time. But you see their hands. Yeah, they're like, oh, excuse us. Let me move my hands out so y'all can close the door neatly. <laughs> uh, now that's everything for fake ass zombies. Let's get to the Commonwealth. All right. This is the, well, the action bigger happened. part of the show, probably. Mm-hmm. So a little music. <laughs> The Commonwealth. Um, Yumiko and Max are in an apartment where Mercer busted with Eugene. Like, I saved him. You know, he's not going to die. And he's like, but everybody's looking for him because he was supposed to get murdered within the hour. Mm-hmm. Um, y'all need to lay low. Um, I, I got to go convince enough troops to be on my side so we could take Pamela down. And then Yumiko and Max, Max are like, no, we don't need to lay low. Eugene, you lay low, but we're going to actually keep the people riled up so that they'll be ready to revolt whenever, you know, the time, time comes. comes. Right. We can't let this die down. Um, a trooper outside whose name is Rose, black dude. Uh, a lot of a lot of black people in the troopers. It's kind of interesting mm-hmm. with the Commonwealth. Come on. Uh, but yeah, a trooper outside lies on his walkie talkie because he's actually on Mercer's side. And so he gets a radio walkie talkie, like, where's Mercer? You got eyes on him. And he's like, look, he's literally looking at Mercer. And he's like, I don't know where he's at, uh, but I'll get word to him as soon as I see him. Um, so this guy knows that, Mer- that, that Mercer saved Eugene. He's collaborating to overthrow the government. He's got Max and Yumiko in this apartment. Like he, so he must can be trusted or Mercer thinks he can be trusted. Right. So they leave Eugene in the apartment, and I don't know why, but this made me laugh so hard. They close the door. <laughs> they close the door, and fucking Eugene puts the chain lock on the door. Yes, the fuck that's gonna do. The chain lock, like it. The soldiers that's the are weakest of you. the chains. They're not gonna give up when it's chain locked, and if they somehow manage to think the apartment is abandoned. You putting the chain lock on the door immediately makes them suspicious somebody's in there. Yes. This is such a, like, <laughs> Eugene thing to do. Because he's normally so smart, but the coward just kicked in real quick. He was like, shit, let me lock the door behind him. <laughs> it's like, boy, that little lock ain't going to do shit. I told you the weakest of the locks. Uh, so then Mercer tells Pamela, he goes to meet Pamela in her office, and he's like, I don't know how Eugene got away, dog. I somebody seen him, but we looking for him. We looking for whoever helped them. We're going to figure out who it is. But while I'm thinking about it, people have been disappearing for a long time. And we never found out who's responsible. We've investigated, but we still haven't found out. Maybe today is the day we're going to get to the bottom of this shit. And Pamela ain't like that. She was like, I ain't like that shit. She's like, well, do your job and go find Eugene and, and, and protect the Commonwealth. But she keeps the black woman who is apparently second in command now uh, because she didn't have no helmet on the whole episode. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember this woman having a lot of lines before. Nope. But her name is Vickers. 
and she's clearly like second in command to Mercer right now. And so she tells the the black woman stays behind, and Pamela tells Vickers, "Listen, keep an eye on Mercer. I, I mean, I don't know what's up, but just watch his every move right. and report back to me." And I want y'all to go door to door looking for Eugene. You see Eugene, shoot his ass on sight. Uh, and then the woman says, well, what about the crowd? You want us to use some dispersal methods to make the crowds go home? And she said, Pamela says, no, I'll handle the crowd. Don't, don't worry about that. And then the woman leaves. And then Pamela picks up a walkie-talkie and says, B-17. Um, so I don't, we don't, I don't think we've heard B-17 before, or if we have, Mm-mm. I, I did notice it. I don't remember um, B-17. That's, that's a different call. Yeah. I don't know what the, like, you know, call, like, uh, what, what it does or whatever. Like, so maybe next episode we'll get like a, um, I, I think that may have something to do with what happened later on. But, but yeah, I yeah, to, but I'm saying yeah. maybe we'll get like a definitive like what this is right now. Right. Speculating, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm thinking it's related to the herd of walkers and telling the people to like gather the walkers, but also the way that it was. Um, oh, you know what? Maybe she's telling them the location for the walkers to go to, because yeah. clearly they were organizing those walkers before she said that in the walkie-talkie. Yes. So maybe she's saying, like, take it to gate B-17 or some area of the Commonwealth that'll make be like, oh, we need to lock down everybody. I'm sorry. B-17 is under attack. But uh, but we definitely know that it's something surreptitious that, that has something to do with it. Um, but yeah, so she says B-17. Uh, we go to the police office where Mercer is questioning you, Mikko, but it's all fake. He they both know where Eugene is, and he's like, Yeah, she's trying to fight, act fake upset. How dare you? Yeah, he's questioning her in front of Vickers to look like I'm doing my job and I'm questioning her and I'm trying to find out where Eugene is, but Yumiko isn't saying. Um, now the one thing is because they believe in that hierarchy shit here, I totally believe that if Yumiko says she didn't know, they gotta let her go. Even even if it's highly suspicious, because Commonwealth is you a lawyer, you're a doctor. Mm-hmm. We can't just lock you up like a normal janitor, right? And also, is you know one of those things where she was like, "If I knew where he was, I would be with him." Right. So then Rose, the blood, the brother that is also a guard but seems to be loyal to to Mercer, he pops in and says, "Hey, you got a phone call or a radio call from somebody named Aurora," and so. Uh, he tells Mercer says basically, y'all can leave, and then he tells Vickers, who wants to stick around so she can hear this call. Mm-hmm. He tells her, "I need the room," right. so she leaves. But even then, she she's gonna note that you told her to leave the room. I, I guess so. Either she's gonna be like he's up to something, and and that was like she was basically Lee Trevino in Happy Gilmore this whole episode. <laughs> like she just kept looking at Mercer. Like every time Mercer did Side something. Eye. Every time Mercer tried to help somebody or do something sketchy, she the camera would just cut to her face looking like, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. What you doing? I know you, I know you up to something, you know. Uh, so then um it's Princess on the radio under mm-hmm. the saying her name is Aurora. He says switch to her old apartment number, that channel, different channel on the walkie talkie, so people can't listen. Um, but once again, even if they someone would have heard that part. Not that they would have figured out what channel they were on, but he, they would be like, this motherfucker's up to something. Um, so then um, she informs them of the plan. We're on a train. We're coming to the Commonwealth. We're going to take Pamela down. Are you going to be okay with that? He pauses for a second. And, <laughs> oh, that's the funniest shit ever. And he says it real cool. Like he switches into like deep voice, sexy mode and goes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> and that's because she's been like what you got on girl right that's what i was waiting <laughs> on to say hey let me ask you this though uh is anybody else around the radio can they hear what we talking about <laughs> um let me ask you something though did them butt cheeks clap right so <laughs> then um she so he says yeah he says the prisoners if she brings back the people that were in the prison camp they can be witnesses 
Mm, which gives yeah. him like a legal recourse and reason to take Pamela down as opposed to just looking like a mutant. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Cause he's still obsessed, obsessed with order, doing things the right way, keeping things legal. Because I think, and, and you know, you could detract, you could take this away from Mercer if you want, but I actually think it's pretty smart of him. He knows that the Commonwealth is used to order and structure. To take Pamela down, you kind of need to do it within the framework of order and structure because anything else kind of looks like you just usurped power because you're ahead of the security forces. Yes. And that will not last. That won't be stable. That'll make you a dictator. Uh, so I kind of understand of him being like, we have to do this by the book. Yes, yes. To be sure and to make it stick. So he tells them how to sneak into the Commonwealth using some old access tunnels. Um and as he's saying this, an alarm goes off because a swarm is coming and uh, he has to go because they're, the swarm is approaching from the east um, and it's the same swarm that Aaron and them were a part of. Um, mm-hmm. So he goes out, everyone's preparing that soldiers are going outside the gate or to the gates or whatever. They're gassing up their vehicles and shit and getting ready to go take on the swarm. And as he's doing this, Max comes over I think this is interesting too because Max is such an interesting character because the way that Pamela hasn't like locked her in a room somewhere is just wild to me. I guess you can make the argument, well, Mercer's the king of the police, so why would she do that? But it feels like the kind of thing Pamela would do and then expect Mercer to just do his fucking job. This seemed like that kind of thing. But anyway, Max talks to uh, Mercer and they try to do it surreptitiously like He's handing her stuff, or they hug, and he's telling her like, like, and hey. periodic, he talk out loud. Yeah, like I told everybody else, you need to go on and get inside. Right. right. So follow the protocol, woman. But, right. But then he would hug her and be like, "My girlfriend coming back. Don't worry, she brings it." Hey, girl, don't forget uh, the, the dinner's at seven. Follow the rules. Right. Uh, but he tell he says girlfriend too, talking about princess. Mm-hmm. So I guess you know maybe uh. Maybe he was a little more conflicted than he, he, he looked at the episode. Mm-hmm. But um, while he's doing this and the reason he's talking out loud like that and then hugging her and whispering shit is because, oh, hating ass Vickers. Come on, hating ass Vickers. Who decided to just be that bitch at work uh, is, is, is just hating and looking and going, mm-hmm, he hugging his sister, mm-hmm, writing it down on my notepad, something's up. <laughs> Um, and she even talks to like the, I don't know if she talks to Rose, but she talks to another guard in the background. So I don't know if Vickers is asking like Rose questions to be like, so what is, what's going on with him? Have you noticed anything or what? But she's clearly on his ad, on Mercer's like ass Mm -hmm. to try to figure out like whose side he on. Right. And he knows that she's been looking at him crazy too. Right. But basically he hugs Max, Mercer does, and tells her, listen. Uh, my girl and her people coming in from the like from the south or the access tunnels. I was supposed to go get them. I can't. So I need you to hide them until like I get back from dealing with this horde of zombies outside. Mm-hmm. And Max is like, all right then. But they say this all in a whisper hug. Uh, our group gets off the train. They hide in the woods. They fuss a little bit. They get too loud. Some guards hear them. And and the fuss is like, you know, Negan going, we just sitting ducks. We got to make a move. Mercer's not coming. And then, uh, you know, Carol's like, I'm going I'm to make a move around by myself. I'll, I'll sneak in a different way. And then, you know, and then Judah's like, shut the fuck up. And then the guard is like. <laughs> Y'all too loud. She, she, don't, she don't want to tell the door. Y'all too loud. The guard is like, you hear something? And then uh, they get called away on the walkie-talkie. They get orders to go reinforce like the wall and his backup for the horde that's coming. And the guard even questions, he's like, even access tunnel H, like y'all want us to move? And they're like, everybody. And so you know, like this is a big problem. So we basically know that you know they got the orders conveniently at that time to leave the area where our crew was sneaking in. So that's, they they sneak in. Probably has something to do with Mercer. Mercer probably. Right. Had somebody to call them out of that area. Back in her office, Pamela is talking, gets a call from Vickers, the snitch. And uh, she tells Mer- tells her, hey, I've been watching Mercer. He met with his sister. 
He went to stop the swarm, but he also recalled soldiers from the access tunnel area, which is where our crew just infiltrated, you know, Mer and Pamela thinks about it. And then Vickers like, you want me to recall them troops? Tell them to go back there. And Pamela says, no, I'm sure Mercer has his reasons. But her face says, mm-mm. He up to something. Right. Her face is like, I can't trust him. He got to be up to something. And so Mercer goes to the wall. And he's giving orders, directing the soldiers to protect the herd. And he's really doing his job at this point um, because he does see the the herd protecting the, the, the Commonwealth from this herd is an actual threat, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but out there in the fucking wild, like the, beyond the wall, some of the soldiers are on Jeeps and they're trying to lead the zombies away. And I don't think it's the same same soldiers that led the herd to them. Mm -hmm. Different group. But these motherfuckers get killed because a variant <laughs> hops on the back of the fucking... <laughs> right. It was like, I want to ride. And we was quiet as shit. It hops on the Jeep, pulls itself up, lay, stands up. We don't see it attack and see the thing flip. Probably just a money thing and stunt thing or something. Mm -hmm. But we hear it through the walkie-talkie with them being like, oh, no, it's got me. Oh, blah, blah, blah. got crash. And then we see the aftermath when Mercer looks out, you know, with his <laughs> binoculars and sees the Jeep is flipped over. Yeah, the, the, the Jeep turned over like somebody kid playing playing with a toy Jeep. <laughs> right. So that... They're dead, and and mm -hmm. and also this means they're not mm -hmm. gonna be able to keep the zombies from from approaching the wall now. Right, because their whole job was to kind of herd them around and give the zombies something to pay attention to. So then Mercer tells everybody fall back on him, regroup, and then we're gonna go out to the wall. We're gonna kill the swarm before it can get to the city. Um, while this is happening, Eugene paces in the apartment until security. He knocks on his door because they're going door to door doing that search. Mm -hmm. And that's when he realizes, oh, shit, I got to unlock the chain lock. And he also realized, oh, shit, uh, this chain lock uh, is the weakest, weakest lock. I told you. Well, that's not why he did it. He did it because if they oh, hit, try to open the door and the chain lock is on, they know you're in there. Right. That's why it was stupid. That's why I laughed so hard. I, I see what you said. It was stupid in the first place. Yes. Yeah. It's just like, way to let them know you're here. So... Um, the soldier says, Hey, I, I'm coming in, uh, opens the door. Um, Eugene hides behind the door, ambushes the trooper, and he don't just ambush him, he slams this motherfucker down. <laughs> like he spears him like doing a wrestling move, like a stone cold Steve Austin, right? and then takes a flashlight, takes his helmet off, knocks him upside the head like four times, knocks him out. All I did is kill him, right? Eugene. <laughs> Gangster, what the fuck? And then uh on the walkie-talkie, he hears another soldier ask for a check-in, like, "What's your twenty, such and such?" Which means, like, Eugene need to get the fuck out of there because they this dude, looking. they're gonna come looking for him. Uh, but I was shocked that look at the big balls on Eugene. Who knew? Mm -hmm. Who knew? Not me. Uh, our crew that got off the train, you know, Carol, Daryl, it's all of them, Connie, Kelly, everybody, and some extras. Um, some prisoners, and so they all head to Pamela's headquarters in City Hall. But it's an ambush because they see the doors are locked, like it's motherfucking yeah. the third act of Lean on Me. <laughs> that was like it's too quiet. Like literally, everybody was missing. I was like, well, she did lock the shit down, but it was like I don't remember the deal. Somebody was like, something ain't right. It's not just that it's too quiet. If you look at the doors, they're locked with chains and like locks on them. So. This is a kill box now. There's one way in, one way out. Basically, they they just been to shoot y'all up. And so as they're noticing this, you know, Judah's like, what's wrong or whatever? Tyler goes, come on, guys, we're almost there. Loud as hell. And immediately <laughs> gets killed. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> so we hardly knew you, Tyler. Hardly knew you. We didn't get to change the people's hearts anyway. Uh, so then a bunch of extras get shot by Pamela's men, but the plot armor protects our people for a long of time. Of course. Uh, there's lots of shooting in the kill box. Her, Pamela's men are on a balcony, so they kind of have the uh, the high ground. Yes, the advantage. And so, you know, our people are just getting rained down on by bullets. They're shooting back, but it's just, you know, it's just a lot of shooting and very few people getting hit except for extras and stuff. Uh, but then 
one soldier gets killed. Pamela comes out of her office, picks up this soldier's rifle, and starts shooting. And starts motherfucking bucking. I did not know. This took her to the next level for me. Okay, I didn't know she had him had it in her because she up there and dude went down. I was like, "Bitch, are you scared?" She was like, "Fuck no." Bah, 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 bah. Apparently, she's a real one, and she I gangster. I get it, Hornsby. Okay, I get why you was on your knees, uh, ready to let Mama give you a spanking because she was giving that energy. Ah! She she had big dick energy. Yes, yeah, she did. Uh, but she starts shooting and she goes to shoot Maggie, but Judith runs and knocks Maggie out the way to save Maggie's life. But of course, Judith gets shot. Yep. And this reminds me of Carl. It, Carl getting shot in like season three, I think, when they made it to the farm with Herschel. But he gets shot by Herschel's like son-in-law or something um, in the woods because he was trying to shoot a deer, but he accidentally shot, shot Carl. And she had just talked about her brother dying, trying to save people. This is literally her trying to save somebody. Everything about her family and her legacy, all the people she's lost. Yeah, she looks at Maggie like an aunt. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, it just made me think about all those parallels as she got shot. Um, everyone sees this and they go ham. And it makes you wonder, how hard were y'all shooting in the first place? Y'all could have been shot the whole time because... After they shot Judith, everybody got in formation and they took them motherfuckers out except for Pamela and one other dude who managed to escape. But before she escaped, Pamela yells, you did this, blaming them for the girl getting shot. Like, yeah, if y'all would have just been that. slaves and died, this we wouldn't have We wouldn't have been here. <laughs> right. Why couldn't y'all go to the plan? <laughs> uh, plantation. Daryl said, yeah, the plantation. <laughs> Daryl says, we got to go. Because they need to get Judah some medical attention. C tells Zeke to throw a fire extinguisher at the balcony. And then Daryl takes Rick's gun and shoots it. And it gives them cover to escape because the whole room fills with smoke. Mm -hmm. um, so they did it foam everywhere. It was hard to wipe off because I hate that shit. When I use the fire extinguisher at that time. Uh, Mercer gets arrested for treason. By Vickers in the middle of him trying to save everybody from the swarm. That shit didn't make no sense. Now, soon before Pamela set up the kill box, she hit the, you know, hit the hit hit Vickers on the hip and said, Hey, go ahead and erase Mercer arrest Mercer. Cause I know something's going on. Cause by that time she knew something. Cause if she knew to make the fucking city hall a kill box, then she knew she was planning on some shit going down. So it was like even if he isn't, he might be in on the plan. So I just want to stop him before he makes it makes it worse. So they arrest him on treason charges. So she thinks he's part of it. Uh, he comes willingly, but he tells his soldiers to watch the perimeter and take care of the swarm of walkers. Because yep. once again, he's seeing the bigger picture. Yes, and uh, uh, his his boy was like, "Look, if you book, he's like, put your guns down, dog. Put your guns down. They they was they was ready to go." Yeah, his soldiers would have fought for him to the death, I think. Mm -hmm. But I think he knows that that loss of life wouldn't help. Um, so he's he's like, you know, this is bigger than Pamela's bullshit to Vickers. Right. He as was like, Vickers, don't you see the swarm out there? As Vickers does not realize this. No, because she had been out there. This is another case of an information silo situation. Because at first I thought Vickers was in on all the dirty shit. Later, we'll see for sure she's not. But in this moment, she's kind of a little bit shocked by him saying this is bigger than her bullshit. Make sure y'all stop that swarm. And it, like she's like she's a little like a little surprised that she's not like, you know, in on the Pamela Milton. We we secretly own slaves j shit. Mm -mm. Um, so then Yumiko and Max see Eugene sneaking around because he's now wearing a hoodie and he's got a gun. And they decide to go around and group up with him. He sneaks around back and knocks a soldier out. Yumiko and Max follow him. And they're right in this. Metal Salad. And they're right. He looked like Metal Girl Salad. For yes. Real. Okay. And I'm like, he has the mullet and he had the fucking like camouflage thing. But the thing that was interesting is he was going to City Hall. Mm -hmm. Meaning like, that's where Pamela is. I don't know if he was planning on going in and killing her or what. Right. But. He gets to City Hall, and as he happens to be trying to break in, that's when Daryl and the crew with Judith and all them, they're coming out. Mm -hmm. And so they basically reunite right there. Um, and 
at the same time, the East Gate finally gets overrun by walkers. And the reason is because a few variants start climbing the fucking walls. Yes. And when the dude was like, hey, dog, um, the walkers is climbing. They, they was like, what? What are you talking about? He was like, I'm serious, y'all. Like, they're climbing. Oh, no. And then they say, you know, you hear go. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It was great camera work because they show him on his walkie talkie being like, the, look at those walkers over there. They're climbing the fucking poles, y'all. We need help. And then to his, when the camera pans back to him, suddenly in the view on his left side where he can't see, a walker has climbed up and is standing next to him. Mm-hmm. Now, convenient zombies. <laughs> this was hilarious. The walker, it whooped his ass. Like, it didn't just bite him. It, like, ripped his helmet off and shit. He was screaming the whole time. <laughs> the fucking that Commonwealth was like, gotcha, bitch. Commonwealth soft as baby shit, man. They are the worst. <laughs> like, for them to be for them to be doing all this shit, they are the softest motherfuckers in the earth. All that armor for nothing. Just for big nothing. for nothing. It's just like a, a, a they're like an NBA center that just sorry. Well, you like you <laughs> why are you tall? <laughs> What's wrong with you? For what? For why? For who? So anyway, they they he dies, and as he dies, he hits the open gate button. <laughs> yes, yes, he did, which is hilarious. He was like, Oh, why would I go ahead and open this gate before I die? Convenient <laughs> zombies strike again. Yes. So Vickers informs Pamela of the perimeter breach in her office. She's got blood on her face from the people that died. And Pablo didn't believe her. And she, yeah, it's not possible. And she lets it slip a little bit. She goes, this is not possible. This is supposed to be a standard, I mean, supposed to be a lockdown. Now, I think what she was trying to say, this is supposed to be a standard, like, get the swarm, Mm -hmm. make everybody go into lockdown until I can figure something out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but she almost slips up. Uh, Vicar notices a little bit, but doesn't get suspicious. And she tells Pamela, like, I got a plan to save the city. It's a long shot, but we could do this, this, and this. Pamela says, fuck all that shit. Put some soldiers outside my house, and then put them outside the rest of the rich people's houses. We'll divert the swarm to the lower wards. And the woman's like, that. Vicar's like, that's pretty much a death sentence to everybody living in the lower wards. And Pamela's like, we rich. You protect the estates and seal the rest off. That's the job. Go do it. I don't know why she don't think that as you're talking to people greasy, it's life and death. These are people that are like trained with weapons, shit like this. And it's going to be interesting the next episode because it's like, yeah, these people can turn around and blow you away at any point in time for you talking to them greasy. Well, one, she's panicking. She just shot a kid. Um, right. and she also, the, her plan is going wrong. The walkers are now inside. And I think also this is just classic TV writing. As we get close to the end, she is just so nakedly villainous. Like, uh, just even five episodes ago, I would have been like, I don't know, like Pamela's ineffectual and she loves her son. Right. And that's her weakness. And now I'm like, oh, you're the, you might be literally one of the worst villains. If you think about it, maybe even worse than Negan in a way. When it's and there. Negan's terrible. She mm-hmm. may be worse than Negan. She just don't swing the bat. Right. But she fucking put people into like literal slavery and take away their kids and shit. Like she's evil as fuck. Yes, and, sir. and it's just all coming down around her at this time. And she's letting the, 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 the slip show because v- Vickers even notices that part. Once she gets to this, you can't not notice when the woman's like, let the poor people die. Everyone right. knows that's wrong. Like, you know, Vickers might have family and shit like that down there. You're like, yeah. fuck them too, basically. Yeah, it's just a thing where everyone knows it's wrong. It's not, mm-hmm. you know, whether she got family or not. I know that what you're saying is not what a leader should say. Yeah, why you got all these starship troopers and they ain't doing shit? Uh, so Daryl runs while carrying Judith, and the troopers are now ignoring them because they're sealing the lower wards off. They're not even trying to catch the group no more. And this is a big ass group. They can't like hide them. They didn't even shoot at them. They basically was like, "Fuck it, the walkers will get them. We got bigger fish to fry. The walkers are in the fucking um in the community. So whatever, right? And we even see." <laughs> I think my favorite part of this is we see one of the walkers climb on top of a car and Negan goes, what the fuck? He did, because they had never seen that before. 
such a random thing. Also, man, so glad they finally allowed cursing. I don't know what the fucking hold up was, but they should have been cursing from season four at minimum. Right. But to have, not that Jeffrey Dean Morgan did a bad job. He did a great job. He did an even better job than, than I could expect. But ne- I now can't help but think if they would have allowed Negan to curse the way he did in the comics. Yes. How fucking cool that would have been for, for uh, Jeffrey Morgan. But maybe maybe it wouldn't have come across the same in live action. But, man, I wanted him to try. Because mm-hmm. he hit that what the fuck, and I said, that's my Negan. That's the one I wanted. Right. You know. But uh, anyway, he says, what the fuck? Luke and Jules escape from the herd and join up with our crew. They almost get they shot. They almost but, get shot because they were like, look, all y'all look the same to us. But Kelly stops everyone from shooting them. And then um, Judith, uh, Daryl takes Judith down an alley and the rest of the crew seals the, the walkers away by pushing them and stuff. And Yeah, Carol cut an opening for them. Maggie did, too. Oh, Maggie did. Yeah, yeah it was okay. Maggie. But it doesn't matter. Just they protect Judith and Daryl because family. That's what it's all about. And as they're Daryl's carrying her away, Judas, who's kind of half half in, half out with obviously blood loss and shock, says, Daddy. And and then that ends the episode. Mm-hmm. So oh man, what a sad, sad state of events. Hopefully she'll be all right. We got one more episode to find out. Uh Karen, what are you looking forward to next week? In the finale, the season finale, series finale. Series, this is gonna be really interesting. Uh, to see the fall of Pamela Milton because she, I, she got to die. Like I, I don't, I not trying to find. This is something where I would be shocked if she survived this, or if she does survive, she's gonna be going to jail, like or something. Because you can't send all those zombies down there and don't think the people are gonna be like, "Hey, bitch, you sent these zombies to fucking kill us." Mm-hmm. Like we seen the soldier box them in here so that they couldn't flow everywhere. Like, come on, dog. I'm looking forward to Pamela dying. I kind of have. I'm interested to see one is the next episode like longer than normal. I can see that. Or if they do this thing where you kind of wrap up the Pamela shit early with mm. the Commonwealth, and then the rest of the episode could be like almost a flash forward or something. I can see Cause that. Cause I feel like they got a lot to, they need to accomplish a lot in this last episode. We know they're doing spinoffs. There's a Rick and Michonne movie coming. There's a Rick and um, Michonne series, isn't it? No. Okay, just a movie. That's what I heard. Uh, I mean, okay. let's maybe I heard it wrong. I don't let me go. Yeah, there was a movie, but I didn't know if it was a series too. And in addition to the movie, I didn't know. Well, it, it, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I know the uh I don't know. I'm looking it up now. I mm-hmm. know for a while they wanted to do a series, but then the actor that plays Rick left, and then of course the Guerrero blew up with the movies and stuff and it seemed like she left and they didn't have time, but um, it says series on IMDb. It doesn't say how many episodes it'll be. And it only has one down as the thing. I don't so. know if they just aired one episode so far. Okay. Yeah. I have no idea. I don't know that it's even aired. You So they have aired this. Oh, I'm, I'm asking. Cause uh, you know, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I don't think this has come out yet. Okay. Um, and I don't know. Yeah, I, I have no idea. Like, so I, I mean, I'm looking forward to see how they tie that in if they do that. Um, you know, uh, and I don't want. I'm not gonna Google too much because I don't want any spoilers. Right. But um, okay, someone in the chat said it's a series, six episode series in 2024. Okay, yeah, so no, it hasn't aired yet. Yeah, and Daryl has one. This actually Daryl. Yeah. So and I, maybe Carol's gonna be in it or something. I mm-hmm. Anyway, point being, I think they have a lot to do to try to like set those things up, right? And in this storyline, mm-hmm. um, and it felt like there was a future Judith that does the narration. So I'm wondering if we get a flash forward to a new actress playing Judith or something, and uh, you know, and this is where the series is gonna go from here or something. But uh, whatever happens, I'm just looking forward to it. I love this show. It's gonna gonna suck to say goodbye to it. But you know, I, and I don't know that we'll be recapping all the spinoffs and stuff. To be honest, because it's a lot of like just work. Yes. Um, and these numbers are not big when we do this. Like, mm-hmm. uh, we do it because we love talking to each other about the show and stuff. But yes. 
Uh, and we love and we want to finish this out with our fans, but that's mm. this will probably be it for us with Walking Dead recaps. Other than we might do some quick and dirty fear, fear. the Walking Dead and to wrap that up. But uh, yeah, thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back for the finale next week. Until then, I love you. I love you too. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Peace.